everyone, it's Lisa Tilson here today for Picket Fence Studios. I'm here to show you how to create a shaker card using the new slimline die cutting system. So for today's card I'm using some products from the latest release plus some previously released products and I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a shaker using the new slimline die cutting system. So I'll just run through the main products. Those dies are from the Slimline die cutting system. I've got the Slimline Daisy Burst stencil plus the set of stamps, that's Beautiful Girl Flowers and the coordinating dies. I took the smallest of the rectangle dies from the Slimline die cutting system. That is eight and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. I'm just taping that down onto some Nina and I run that through the Gemini Junior. Next I take the plain stitched circle die from the system and I'm just going to tape that down to the centre, just sort of centre right hand side of my card panel. You could measure this out but I just decided to eyeball it. If I was using all three I would measure them out a bit but I could do this quite easily just by looking at the panel. Just removing the frog tape from that and I'm now going to tape the white panel to the back of the daisy burst stencil. So I attach it at the back but I also then turn the panel over and then I tape the stencil down onto my work surface as well before I go ahead and apply the ink. And I'm just using a light grey ink here and applying some of the ink to the top part of the stencil and also to the bottom and I kind of fade it out as I go down the panel and up uh, the panel from the bottom. So you can easily pull the stencil up, I didn't put any pixie spray on it. So I can pull it up and quite easily see how much ink I've actually got on my panel. So once I'm happy with that I remove the tape and then just check that it is as I want it to be. To start creating this shaker element of the card I'm now going to put some multimedia mat around the outside of the window. I usually use this or some extra strong double sided tape just to make sure that the acetate sticks really firmly to the back of that panel to make sure that you don't get any sequins seeping out. So just placing the acetate down there and pressing my finger around it to make sure it's secure. I've added some foam tape to the back of the panel and I've created a side folding note card which is eight and a half by three and a half and I'm just working out here where I need to put my sequins on that card base. What I meant to do before I actually came to this bit, before I put the acetate on the back of the uh, ink blended panel, I was going to actually just trace an outline onto the card base so I would know where to put my sequins, but it did work out okay this way. I just kept putting my um, panel back over the top to make sure that all the sequins were in the right place. And they are gin and tonic and the pink lady sequins. They make a really, really pretty mix. So just removing all the foam tape now and I'm pressing that down onto the card base and just making sure that I secure that tightly. And I do go over the edge with my bone folder just to make sure that that's really crisp. So that is the shaker part of the card finished. It's really quick and simple to do and um, it's really pretty and of course it makes that lovely noise when you shake it. Moving on to the colouring part of the card now, I'm using some images from Beautiful Girl Flowers. I'm just laying those down onto some white card stock and I'm going to pick those up. I'm using the Misty of course. I'm going to pick those up and stamp them using black hybrid ink. And then once I've done that, I do stamp them two or three times just to make sure my image is clear. I flip the white panel back over and I stamp the same stamps at the other end because I do, I do need to use several of each image. 
For all the leaves and foliage, I just used two colours of green. The numbers are up on the screen. I've sped this up a little bit. And as I said, I'm not going to show you all the colouring. It's very basic colouring. Because there's quite a lot of black in the image, you just really want to add um, maybe a slightly darker colour to your lighter colour just to give some definition and then I do the same with the rest of the images the floral images and I've put the numbers up again on the screen for you and I have sped this up a little bit for the smaller pink images I just use two and I just blend those out so there's a slightly darker colour in the middle but for the two larger florals I go ahead and I use four different pinks for those I start off with my lightest which is RV63 and I'm just adding that almost to the edge of each of the petals. It's really basic loose colouring and then I go in then with the RV55 and I take that almost to the edge of where the RV63 is just to add a darker colour in the centre and then I go ahead and I blend those two colours out with the RV55. So once I've done that, I take my next darkest colour, which is RV06, and I find this to be quite fluorescent. So I didn't add quite so much into the centre of that because I didn't want to really, really brighten the image up. So I just put a few bits of that in here and there, and then I blended it out with the RV55. I now finish with my darkest colour, that is RV17, and I just add a little bit into the petals just to add a little bit of contrast here and there, and I did use that in the centre of the flower as well. For the second flower, I use the same four pinks again, and because this has got really small colouring areas, I obviously couldn't blend within each area, so I took my lightest colour, which is RV63, I've put them up on the screen again, and I just went in and added some strokes of that following the lines of the image, and then I did the same with RV55, and then I added a little bit more of the RV06, and I blended bits out here and there, particularly with the RV06. You can, it's very difficult, my hand is in the way a little bit there, but you can see it's quite bright. So I blend the RV06 out with RV55. And then my darkest colour just gets added in at the end. Again, I follow the lines of the image. It really just is there to add a bit of contrast. I take the coordinating dies down with some low tack tape and ran those through the Gemini Junior and then I set all the images to one side whilst I worked on my sentiment. The sentiment is actually from Kylie Boo. I really love that set and I wanted to do a birthday card so I just stamped that down on some white card stock, made a little banner and then I adhered that flat onto the card panel with some multimedia mat. We're coming now to the bit where we arrange the images and this does take a little bit of time. You can't see but I do have a previously made card on the left hand side so I was sort of sure or more or less sure where I wanted to put my images but you know this is a, a part of the card where you can spend a little bit of time faffing around, moving things around and so on just making sure you get the placement right. This is the bit where I'm trying to fit in the last few images and every time I put something in, something else moves. So it does get a bit tricky at this point. So I take some Glad Press and Seal. This is a fantastic product for picking up all those images as it is a low tack um, film. So I take a little piece of that, press it firmly down onto my images and as you can see it lifts them all up. I did lose one along the way but it mostly picks them, all of them up in the position that you want them. And I add lots of dabs of glue onto the back and then I pick that back up. I'm taping my panel down here just to make sure it doesn't move. And then I flip that press and seal back over 
and it holds all those images whilst I sort of lay it down into position and then I press my fingers down just to make sure that they are all pressed securely and then I peel it back. You can see one or two of them move. That's because when you have the um, images turned over and you're adding the glue, you can't, you can't kind of get to every single bit. So there's always going to be little bits that you'll need to re-adhere once you actually put them back down onto your panel. And that's what I'm doing there. Just finishing there with that little rogue piece of foliage which fell out as I was turning the press and seal over. So I'm just putting some acrylic blocks on that just to make sure that they all stick down securely. And that finishes the card. I really like how this turned out and I hope that you'll give it a go. It's a really easy way to create a one window shaker card. Bye for now.